Hi, my name is Hunter Freeman, and I am working on a text editor which is written using Blazor. As well, it is available as a NuGet package. And I, in this video, am going to uh, finish writing the iLexer for .css files. So currently, if you look at this website that I have open, it is showcasing an example of what's going to be done with the iLexer. So this comment that's on line one and it goes to line two, it is the color green because the iLexer is saying that there's a comment that spans from character zero, character at index zero, all the way down to uh, whatever it may be that this ending of the comment is. Therefore, it gets colored green because it specified that the comments should be colored green. I also need to add in the iLexer uh, lexing of tag selectors, such as uh, this body, and then it has a CSS block, and in the CSS block, there's four attributes being set. So there's the attribute property name, I believe they call it. And there's the attribute property value. And the exact wording for these things, uh, I need to iron out as I'm going through it. It might not be called exactly attribute property name in terms of the CSS documentation that is out there. But I will find the uh, exact name as we go through this. And so I'm going to get started here and open up. Uh, I'm using Writer. And the text that you just saw in the website is inside of, let me show you. I'm in the solution for the Blazor text editor, uh, the NuGet package. The source code is available, open source, and I will put a link to it in the description. And I have that solution open. Inside of this solution, there is a solution folder containing four projects so that things can be demoed. And this website, is also available publicly. So you can go to it yourself. I'm running it locally currently, but if I go to GitHub and I go to the blazor.text.editor uh, GitHub repo, I can see here when I scroll down, there is a demo website and it's running WebAssembly. So make sure that you clear your cache if you see an older version, but I'll open this website right now. Here we can see this is an older version. So I'll control F5 to clear my cache. And then I see that the source code is version 5.1.0, which is the current version. And this is the text editor. And currently it's displaying C sharp. So all of the code that you see in this repo, uh, that is what I have open in Writer. So you could click on code and then copy the URL and then clone it or however you would go about that. That's what I have open in Writer. And then in demo is there's two hosts. There's one for server side and one for WASM WebAssembly. And this class lib and razor lib, I have a plan to use them so that the server side and the WASM can share code, but I have not gotten around to doing that yet. So in blazor.text.edit, in blazor text editor tests, I have a folder for test data named test data folder. And inside of test data folder, 
there is testdata.css.cs. And this is just a public static partial class named testdata. And if I go to a different file, you can see every one of the files that contain test data for this for the different ilexers they all have public static partial class test data and then within this public static partial class that they're all using they have their own class that is public static of c sharp for example so there's one for css as well nested comments are invalid in css so i have an example of that where you open up a comment using the forward slash star within that comment you open again a comment using forward slash star if you go on to then do forward slash uh, star forward slash to close the inner comment it closes the outer comment and then this final one would be flagged as an error an unexpected token in the uh, diagnostic bag so example text 21 lines is the one that you saw on the website at the beginning of this video and Here's an example of a comment, and there's four of them in total. So I can go to the folder Lexers, and then inside of Lexers, just Lex CSS tests. And this is a public class of Lex CSS tests. And I have various tests in here and there's going to be a test for each syntax highlighting that is going to be done so there's a test for many comments of which all of them are valid and currently this is the one that i uh, have implemented i have not finished the rest of them but i run this test and we see it passes so what is this asserting? It's saying, take the example text, uh, which is 21 lines in this case, from this uh, class that contains these constants to be used for the test data right here, using this one, this public const string. And then I'm replacing the line endings with a standardized line ending so that the test is correct on a Windows machine versus a, a Unix like operating system. Otherwise you would have carrot return new line when you run it on Windows versus new line and your test would fail because the starting index of the comment the first character that starts that comment would be off because character return new line is two characters wide versus just new line which is one character wide so i standardize the line endings and then i make my array here of what i expect the text spans to B. So I'll show you what the text span is. The text editor text span has three positional properties. It is a record and it has the starting index inclusive, which would be relative to the entirety of the text. What index is the first character that is part of this token? And the ending index exclusive is what is the index 
immediately after the final included character. So this ending index exclusive is not actually part of the token. It is the marker of when that token stops. The decoration byte is referring to a CSS class that I'll bring up the website. If I open up the inspect element dev tools and then I can use the select an element in the page to inspect it using my mouse. Then I go down to the text editor and I want to find where the rows are. I expand the rows and we can see every time that I hover over one of these rows, it corresponds to the uh, text editor, each row here. So we see this is the first one because it has a blue background in the actual website when I hover over it in the inspect tools and then so on. And let's take a look at the fact that public class is blue. Both of those are keywords. Whereas tree view service is this greenish color. So why is that? Well, I expand that row and I see I have a span with the class BTE underscore keyword. I have a span which contains ampersand NBSP without any class on it. Then I have another span of a keyword. I have a white space with no class associated. And then I have for this tree view service, that's this greenish color. I have a span with the class BTE underscore type. And if I move the dev tools over to the left so we can see the styles, we could see the class BTE underscore type gets assigned the color of BTE underscore type dash foreground dash color, which is a CSS variable. And it's a CSS variable so that you can change your color theme. So if I were to change my theme from unset to Visual Studio Light clone, we see that we get the light theme now. And I go to the inspect element again, the dev tools. And now we can see that that CSS variable of BTE underscore type foreground and so on has been changed to this uh, more blue, bluish green color that is typical of the Visual Studio code light theme. It's supposed to look like a, a clone of it. So this decoration byte is therefore being used when rendering the text all the contiguous characters with the same decoration byte get appended to a string builder as opposed to being rendered. Once you find a non-matching decoration byte, you then put a span on the website that contains the text of what was in the string builder. You clear the string builder and you put whatever decoration byte that, that those contiguous characters had that matched and you map it to a CSS class. So the way that's done is in the razor lib, uh, the actual C sharp project for the NuGet package, there's a folder for analysis and there is a folder for C sharp. So there's a C sharp decoration kind, which is an enum. The first option is none, then method, then type. Well, 
here's that BTE underscore type CSS class. But how do we get from this enum of C sharp decoration kind dot type? How do you map that to what we see in here? Uh, I'm bringing up the dev tools. If I hover over this span here that has the BTE underscore type, we see that shows us the tree view service, which is a which is a, is a uh, class. So, how do you map from the enum to the CSS class? Well, I can click on the usages, and there is a text editor C# -sharp decoration mapper, which has a method named map. This method takes a decoration byte and converts it to a CSS class. So we see here the C# -sharp decoration kind dot type enum uh, member is being mapped using a uh, a uh, switch expression to BTE underscore type. So the final thing to comment on on this then would be what's with the enum representation and the byte representation and how am I converting between those? Well, you can see here the map method is taking in a decoration byte. It's then casting it as the enum and that way the enum is a uh, well-defined naming of all of your types so that you don't just look at these byte values and as a human try to interpret them you can leverage the enum uh, for that because an enum can be casted as a byte and a byte can be casted as an enum so it's very useful from a human perspective to swap between them. And so let's see. I can go back to the Lex CSS tests. So I'll bring that into view here. Let me, let me close some, uh, minimize, I mean some things here. So uh, just real quick again, there's the Blazor text editor solution, which is up on GitHub. And in there is the Blazor text editor dot tests, and then the folder for Lexers. Inside the folder for Lexers is Lex CSS tests dot CS. And I'll start at the top of the file here. We're going to have many methods in here uh, for all of the syntax highlighting to make sure that the syntax highlighting is working. And then we can also visually check it as well. Uh, and then we'll have the tests combine the two. So I have already done the comment. So I'm going to showcase how I lexed the comment before I lex the next thing in the list, which might be a tag selector. I'm not sure which one I want to do next, but let me show you how I lexed the comments. Where I left off was I was showing you what the text editor text span was. So this test needs to assert that there is a comment starting at character index zero of the example text and it goes up until, but not including, index 107. It gets a decoration byte of 2, and we saw that the decoration byte is being mapped to and from an enum, so we can, in a human way, interpret what these things mean. After saying what the expected output is, 
I create an instance of the text editor CSS Lexer, and I get the text editor text spans by awaiting CSS Lexer dot lex. I pass in the text, and this test is specifically for the comments. So I use link and say I want the text editor text spans that came from lexing the text, but only the ones that have a declaration byte equal to the enum CSS declaration kind dot comment, but cast it as a byte. I then want this to be deterministic uh, in terms of the ordering. I'm not sure why it wouldn't be, but I do an order by, so that way there's no possibility that it comes back in a different order than what I'm asserting. And I order by the starting index inclusive. I do a two immutable array, and then I assert that they're equal. So that where I think all of these comments are is equal to what they actually came back as from the lexer. And because text editor text span is a record, it's going to do a value comparison on the starting index inclusive, the ending index inclusive, and the decoration byte. So let's see how I'm actually lexing the comments and that would be done by first going to the text editor CSS lexer. We have the lex method, so I'll F12. We see that the text editor CSS lexer implements ilexer. The lex method has a string uh, parameter named text and it returns a immutable array of text editor text span and that is a task so it's asynchronous inside of the implementation for lex it makes use of the css syntax tree and the css syntax tree is a class that has a static method on it named parse text it takes in the text from a parameter named string content uh, type your string name is content and then it returns a CSS syntax unit so let me go back to the lecture real quick so we can finish off that I just wanted to show you what the parse text was doing looked like and after invoking parse text on the CSS syntax tree, the lexer will internally find the syntax node root and then use a CSS syntax walker to visit all of the nodes and grab all of the text editor text spans for each one of those nodes. So let me uh, F12 this uh, visit method. So in this visit method, you see it does a depth first search through all of uh, the tree and then it will do a switch statement on the CSS syntax kind to determine what list of ICSS syntax is the underlying interface, but what bucket to put that node in so that we can say, oh, that was a, that was a comment. So it sees a comment, for example, it does, this is named incorrectly. So very quickly, this should say it sees a comment so let's do visit CSS comment syntax. 
because this node in, sp in specific we found was a CSS comment syntax because it had the enum of CSS syntax kind dot comment. And by using this enum, we can very quickly do a switch statement over all of the nodes and determine what underlying uh, C sharp class type they have without having to do an is cast. And then because we know it's uh, a CSS common syntax because of the enum, we then just do a cast. This visit CSS comment syntax is virtual so that it can be overridden. And then you can do more than just adding it to a list, but for now we just need to add it to a list. So in CSS comment syntaxes, you'll have a list of all of the CSS comment syntax data types that were lexed from the text. Specifically, uh, I suppose the parser is the one that's finding them. Um, so let me go back to here. Okay. So as I was saying, you have the list of the CSS comment syntax. Well, what is a CSS comment syntax? I F12 and CSS comment syntax implement the interface, ICSS syntax. And I'll look at ICSS syntax in a moment, but the CSS comment syntax has a constructor which takes a text editor text span, an immutable array of ICSS syntax for all of the children, all the child nodes, and it takes a string value. The string value should not be there because you're duplicating the text. I believe that to be the case. You should instead use your span to get the text when you want it. So in a moment, I'll delete this because I think I was wrong for putting it here because then you're duplicating the text. So continuing though, you can see I then assign all these uh, values from the constructor to get only properties down here. And here we see the CSS syntax kind being a comment. So what's I CSS syntax? It has the CSS syntax kind, the text editor text span that it exists at in the text and then all the child CSS syntaxes, which is an immutable array of ICSS syntax. I then go back to the text editor CSS lexer and we can see here after the visit is done, a select is being done on every one of these lists that are in the CSS syntax walker that was populated by invoking visit. So there's only one list for the CSS currently, and that's for the comments. So if I go back to the lexer, we see the text editor text spans dot add range. All of the comments that are in the syntax walker select out of them their text span and then return that. And now we have all the text spans for the comments. And we would have more parts of this that we add as uh, we lex more and more of the CSS file beyond just comments, which we'll do in a moment. So I'm going to F12 to the parse text and go through how I'm actually getting the CSS comments from the text. So as I had said, this parse text is a static method on the class CSS syntax tree. It takes a string named content and it returns a CSS syntax units 
the CSS syntax unit is going to have on it a constructor that takes CSS document syntax and a text editor CSS diagnostic bag. The reason for the diagnostic bag is so that we can report errors or warnings or info about the CSS text, such as in the IDE currently, you can see this get has a little squiggly under it that's orange. So I hover over that. It says auto property accessor text editor CSS diagnostic bag dot get is never used. So that's what the diagnostic bag is going to do. And then we can put red squigglies if there's an unexpected token or an error of some kind and warnings or info, all those squigglies. So let me F12 into this uh, text editor CSS diagnostic bag. Currently there's nothing in it, but it is extending, uh, inheriting from a class named text editor diagnostic bag. So I'll F12 to the parent class and this parent class is inheriting from I enumerable of text editor diagnostic. So just very quickly, I'll take a look at text editor diagnostic and then come back to the bag. So text editor diagnostic is a record. It has a diagnostic level as a positional property as well as two other positional properties, which would be the string message and the text editor text span at which that occurred in the text. So a diagnostic level would be, for example, hint, suggestion, warning, error, and the message could be what we saw earlier uh, with the warning here, which was when I hovered over the get, it uh, writer, the IDE, is telling me this get is never being used. So that could be the message. And then the text editor text span are the character indices that it starts and ends at, and the start is inclusive, the end is exclusive. So this text editor diagnostic bag, which inherits from I enumerable of text editor diagnostic has privately a list of text editor diagnostic and it exposes ways to interact with the private list of text editor diagnostic by way of the implementation of the I enumerable interface. So there's the get enumerable. There's the report, which is how you would add to it. We see here inside. Uh, well, the report method is public. It's void, turns void. And you give it the diagnostic level. Is it a warning? Is it an error? You give it the message and then you give it the text editor text span that that occurred at. And then the text editor diagnostic bag will make a text editor diagnostic instance given the parameters you gave it and then add that to the private list of text editor diagnostic. As well, beyond just having this report method, there are very specific commonly used uh, report messages. So you would want them to be uh, available without having to repeat yourself. So for example, frequently one might end up needing to report that there was an end of file, uh, which was unexpected. 
that there was more text expected to be there, yet the end of file was met. So this is a common thing that is going to be reported. So there's a uh, centralized method for that. So you don't have to repeat yourself. And the reason for inheriting from text editor diagnostic bag comes from having similar to report end of file unexpected. At times, a specific iLexer implementation will have a commonly used message that they need to, that they need to report, a uh, diagnostic that they need to report. So they would be able to have on themselves. So for example, there's a text editor diagnostic bag at the top level. And then I control F12. We see here there's one for text editor HTML diagnostic bag. So the text editor HTML diagnostic bag inherits the parent text editor diagnostic bag. The reason for doing that is the HTML di diagnostic bag has a very common case of reporting that a tag name is missing or reporting that there's an open tag without a closed tag. So things of that nature regarding HTML tags are unrelated to the overall scope of the text editor diagnostic bag. They are more specific to the HTML diagnostic bag. So that's where the inheritance comes into play. So you can get very specific, commonly used uh, report methods for all of the iLexers when needed. And then end of file is a very common one that's at the top level. Everyone has, has access to that. So I believe I had open the CSS syntax tree and I was showcasing the CSS syntax unit. And then I started talking about the uh, diagnostic bag. But what is the CSS document syntax? So I'll F12. And CSS document syntax is the only other syntax item, as I'm calling it, alongside the CSS comment syntax. The CSS document syntax implements the same interface as the CSS comment syntax, which is ICSS syntax and CSS document will allow us to have a root node for the tree in which the walker will traverse and gather all of the text editor text bands. So CSS document syntax is the root node uh, for CSS files. And just as with all the other ICSS syntax, you give it the text editor text span and an immutable array of all of the ICSS syntax children. And the CSS syntax kind is of type document so that you can do a switch statement instead of a is cast when trying to figure out what a node data type is when walking the tree using the CSS syntax walker. You just do a switch statement instead of doing an is cast. And so let's go back to the CSS syntax tree. In addition to uh, tracking the CSS documents children in a list and making the uh, instance of the CSS diagnostic bag, we need to step character by character through the text content that was given to us as a parameter to the parse text method. And in order to do that, I made it an uh, abstraction uh, by way of a C by way of a C sharp class named string walker. So if I F12 to string walker, 
the string walker is a public class and the constructor for it takes a string named content it then stores the content that you give the constructor privately as a read-only string field named underscore content the string walker exposes the position index at which you're currently at as well there is a expression bound property for getting the current character getting the next character the remaining text and then there are various methods here so I can collapse to uh, folding collapse the definitions so here are the methods there's one for consuming so that would be return the current character and increment the position index the method peak will return the character but not increment your position index and you could give it an offset saying I want to peak ahead backtrack will decrement your position index and then there's various ones for doing a range for all those three base ones which were consume peak and backtrack they all have a range version where you can get a string instead of a char you can check for a substring check for a substring in range so that you give it many substrings and you see it does a for each loop over all the substrings if any of them are a match then it returns true as opposed to doing a match on just one string while not in the file I don't know how I feel about this method uh, because I wanted the while current character not equal to end of file to be abstracted away but in doing so you are creating a funk as opposed to just directly inlining the code so I'm not sure how I feel about that about this uh, method I feel as though I should just inline the code in a while loop instead of having this abstraction as well it's quite confusing because you have to return whether you should break every loop but we'll see that in a moment there's consume word so that will just from where you are currently it'll just read until it sees a white space more or less and this is useful useful for getting keywords for example there's get text which is going to be the starting index inclusive of your text editor text span and then it takes the length by using the ending index exclusive minus the starting index inclusive and just a real quick comment this get text method is what I was referring to when we saw in the CSS comment syntax I am storing the value of what the CSS comment was that is to say literally literally the text that the comment was uh, this seems like a bad idea because it's not even a matter of duplicating the text you are far more than duplicating the text because your parent encapsulates you and it gets the text as well what I mean to say is instead of storing the text value you have the text span and you should use the text editor text span to as needed get the text as opposed to storing it so I will be deleting this value uh, property in a few minutes so let's see what else is going on 
in the CSS syntax tree. So as I was saying, we make that instance of the string walker, which is just an abstraction for stepping character by character, so to speak. Uh, and there's two ways to do the lexing. You could have one while loop with various Boolean states that all influence that one while loop, as you can sort of see here, possibly. Uh, it's using this within comment Boolean to determine what action to take in this while loop. And the other way that you could do the lexer is by invoking methods and sort of traversing through a state machine where you see that a comment has started and then perhaps you invoke the method parse comment. The way I currently have it is everything's just in one while loop and this boolean uh, traverses uh, what code to execute based off of your states up here and you would have many states up here maybe another one would be var within css block so and then there's a pending token starting position index. So inside of the string walker uh, method invocation for the while not end of file. As I had said, I don't know how I feel about the while not end of file method because you have to create a func as opposed to just inlining your code. I'm not sure if that's an optimization that matters in any way, but it's something on my mind that the code could just be inlined and possibly faster. Because every loop, you have to invoke that func. And if you inlined the function, you wouldn't have to jump to the function every loop. It would just be inline. So. That's something I'm, I'm considering changing. But inside of this while loop, so to speak, this while loop abstraction, I'm saying if I'm within a comment, I do something. But let's just collapse this text uh, for a moment. Because firstly, you wouldn't be in, within a comment. The first thing that you see is you enter the while loop and your initial state is that you're not within a comment that within comment is false so let's start at the else statement then well the else statement currently uh, all that's being lexed are the comments so I check to see if I'm within a comment by invoking on the string walker this abstraction for uh, checking for a substring. So check for substring is in a sense peeking ahead in the text and doing a match for whatever string I pass in as the parameter. So in CSS facts, I have two public constant string fields and one of them is comment start which is forward slash star the other one is comment end which is star forward slash and in CSS you can only do forward slash star you do it for both single line and multi line comments and you cannot nest your comments so for that reasoning, if I check for a substring at my current position being equal to forward slash star, I know I'm starting a comment. So I'll mark the within comment state as being true. And if I find that I ended up marking it as true, 
I go on to keep track of the current string walkers position index because I need to know at what character inclusive does this comment begin at. So what is the character index of that forward slash that uh, is part of this comment start constant string of forward slash star. What is the position index of that slash that starts things off? I need to store that outside of the while loop inside of pending token starting position index. I then need to move uh, my position index ahead. Uh, I need to skip ahead, so to speak, by the length of my of what the comment starting is so that I can get to the text of the comments. So because of that, I just discard the result of consuming range, the length of the comment start token minus one, because we're at the first character that's already associated, that's already um, accounted for. So we take the length minus one because the first character is already found and we just want to skip ahead, skip the comment start token and get to the text inside of it. And then I return false because as I had said, this abstraction is a bit awkward. Um, the while not end of file takes in a should break func. So by saying return false, we're saying the loop should continue. It should not break. So then the second loop around, we see that if within comment is set to true. So we check for the closing of comment text found by using the string walker dot check for substring using passing in the CSS facts dot comment underscore end token, which is equivalent to star forward slash. If we find a closing of the comment, then we can skip the rest of the closing comment token, which again is uh, star forward slash. And then we can make a text editor text span using the starting index inclusive as equal to the pending token starting position index that we had set previously in the else. Because here's the if we're within the comment, but within the else, when we weren't within a comment, once we found a comment, we tracked the position that we were at when we found it. So that value gets passed in as the starting index inclusive and then the ending index exclusive is whatever position index the string walker is at plus one because it's exclusive and we mark it with the decoration byte of CSS decoration kind dot comment cast it as a byte. Uh, CSS comment syntax, we can create an instance of that using the text editor text span that we just made, which we named that variable comment text span as well. All of the ICSS syntax implementations have a property of an immutable array of ICSS syntax so that there's a commonality between them all that we can iterate over when doing a depth first traversal through the tree. And in the case of a CSS comment, it would just be empty. So that's why it's immutable array dot empty. And here you see the uh, value being passed in 
I had mentioned this earlier, I don't think I should be storing the value. I think I should be using the text span as needed to calculate what the text was. So I'm going to delete this in a moment. And once we make this, this comment token, the CSS comment syntax, we add it to the CSS document children, which is the root node. Uh, specifically, this is the root node's children, the list of them. We add this new comment, uh, CSS comment syntax. We reset our state, which would be the pending token starting position index gets set to equals negative one because we're no longer pending a comment being read and we are no longer within a comment. So we set, the, set that to false. And this entire loop here will go until the end of file is found or we explicitly tell the abstraction to break early. And so let's say that we're at the end of the file now. Well, the CSS document syntax is immutable, so we cannot make it at the beginning of this method unless we make a builder data type that would allow us to have a mutable form of it and then build at the end. But instead of making a builder, for this immutable data type, I just knew it at the end of the method. So we do new CSS document syntax. It starts inclusively at zero and the ending index exclusive is whatever position the string walker is at. I'm looking at this and I'm questioning whether I should do a plus one on it but I don't want to get distracted. I just want to make a comment that I'm like looking at that. Uh, I think it's correct though. However, uh, I'm, re I'm referring to the, uh, the ending index exclusive, by the way, but the CSS document syntax gets the CSS declaration kind of none. We take the CSS document children. I will F12. What is this? Well, the first thing we did was make that list of ICSS syntax and the diagnostic bag. So I'll go back down. We do CSS document children dot two immutable array so we can get all of the children of the root node and make a var syntax unit, uh, CSS syntax unit specifically. And the CSS syntax unit will contain in it the root node, which is the CSS document syntax, and it will contain in it the text editor CSS diagnostic bag, which will contain all the warnings, the errors, the info, those squigglies that you see, right? Um, that's what the diagnostic bag is going to be for. And then I return it. Um, so. That is how the lexing of the comments are done. I'm going to end this video here and I want to watch it back and figure out whether the way that I said things was followable and whether people want me to do more of these. And then I can make a video of me lexing something if that's desired. But. I have to see how this video uh, went when I watch it back. So thank you and goodbye.